Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome to the uh, Self Mastery platform. And here we discuss um, all things energy work, all things that have to do um, with basically working with Umoya in your life. How do you regulate these states? How do you regulate your emotional state? How do you regulate your, your mental state? It's basically working with the divinity within that affects the divinity without. And that's basically at the basis of manifestation. So the whole point of this work is that we want to have very, very strong models of understanding so that when we're doing what we're doing, we understand from right. everybody. So um, we have a case study. This is the second case study from the one we spoke about last week. So I'm just going to uh, play clients uh, feedback and then we go into her case study. We have, uh, she sent us screenshots. She also sent us audio, right? And thank you so much to all of the clients that um, allow for us that are part of this, um, the work we're doing with the case studies. Thank you for sharing um, these experiences, right? So that we can grow our models of understanding when it comes to these things, because there is such a big shamanic aspect to this sort of work. And we need to have that understanding that um, things like astrology, this is an ancient science, right? It's an ancient science. And just because we are existing in worlds where these things are, are not understood does not mean that uh, we cannot be in positions where we are remembering all of this and then improving our lives. So um, thank you for all of the feedbacks that come in and all of the information that I then get that I can create case studies for. Um, uh, every single week we pick like the, the best two, right? And then we create case studies uh, from that so that we can learn because I think it's important to understand how the elements come into play when we are doing any self-work, right? Um, the four elements, air, water, fire, and earth, right? Um, the water bodies, the fire body, all of that, right? So I want to start... With, we are going to play basically um, her feedback and then her tabu I hope you well. Um, just want to be quick with my voice notes. So I'm going to take you back a bit to the year 2023, where I was falling apart, falling out of love with everything and everyone, you know, get broke like that. My depression was on peak. Um, I was fighting with everyone. I was, res I think that year alone, which I've resigned twice already. And before that, I was taken to a couple of Sangomas and they've been bullshitting me around. Sorry for my language. I mean, I feel like I was Google. Some things are obvious. Some things are not making sense and stuff like that. And then now, um, I am at this gig that was not even paying my bills, but I felt like I had to be there to meet this person who I'm still vibing with today, Uzola. And she's like, no, man, go uh, do this thing, try this thing now, temp, you know, and I tried and I'm like, here's another one. But yeah, you shook me, you know, because you were so accurate with everything and it was scary. You know, the languages you used when you're referring to my people, you know, you would change languages. Even my then boyfriend that I was, you were not vibing with, that I had to break up with for the good, thank God. And you would speak his language like, yeah, man, it, it, it was more like you were in my diary, in my head. Um, yeah. So now... Um, the codes also that you used when you were referring to my dad or when my dad came, when he showed up. So now remember that you were dealing with someone who has past trauma, ugly wounds. And Galok I grew up with my mom drinking till this day. You know, I even had to cut her off. Yeah. So the same same goes for my brother, you know, who inherited my parents drinking. And, you know, I don't know, I feel like he's just feeding to my pain. Um, but funny enough, my dad used to drink a lot too, and I think he introduced alcohol to my mother, but that person knew how to control his alcohol because I feel like that's the only person that genuinely loved me on this earth. That's why I'm struggling to let go of him. Gangaga. Yeah, born. So, okay, like you said, um, that year, it's indoor gonna fall into place yes job offers were indeed money oh, i was not lacking woman i was not lacking yeah and then i ran away because i i thought this was too good to be true for me we are born remember now i'm also i was also used to struggling living on survival mode crying and all the time but now when things were going well it was scary and i ran away from you I don't know. It's it's like an abusive relationship. I just wanted to go back to yeah that yeah born. Okay. Um, I ran away, but then this year again, I'm like, hey, bo. July twenty twenty four. I'm turning thirty. 
yo, I need to celebrate. You know, I need to celebrate who I am. Celebrate my weirdness. You know, these dreams are valid because, I mean, I've been dreaming of things that are happening. People confirming, hey, me, what you said about your dream, stuff like that. So, yes, I'm weird, but I'm going to accept myself, you know. Yeah, and, I mean, I've been watching a lot of your YouTube videos and they're aligning me with who I am. You know, there's a lot of things that you didn't say in the reading, but as I'm listening to them on the videos, I mean, like, yeah, nazoge, we are born. You are teaching me how to heal from the root because of the little girl in me needs to be whole. You know, I need to be ready for this big woman that I'm becoming. And yeah, I'm loving that. You know, I'm loving the videos, honestly. And yeah, man, having to forgive my parents, especially my mother who's still alive, uh, is hard. I mean, this weekend I even went to join her at the church because Gimzalwane no, so So, but uh, I felt like I'm not fitting in this church, but I was there for her, um, thinking if she sees me there, indeed she's gonna grow a bit and stop these things that she's doing. You know, this drinking, and yeah man and having to forgive my father because i always felt like he felt he left me alone in this cruel world it's been hard desert depression is real man it's real and having to go to these nyangas and people that bullshit has you know they delaying the process they delaying the healing process but now i'm feeling much better i don't want to lie i'm in a better place I'm loving my job. Um, I'm, I'm loving the recognition at work. I'm loving Intlant Lazami that are always following me, you know. And what I took out uh, this weekend was, after all, all my sufferings were valid. You know, they made me the strong woman that I am. And I just pray for discipline, you know, to maintain myself and maintain what I've manifested. You know, Om Kulu with Intlant Lazabo. I'm grateful, you know, because remember also when you don't have, I mean, my dad died. He was um, the breadwinner at Kai and we've been struggling so much. And yeah, I mean, it's been hard, but now being taken care of by people who are not there, yo, yeah, it, 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 it's something else. That's gold, you know, and me accepting also Labanda Bam Shope in me, I believe is going to bring Okanya. You know, uh, I want to share quickly this weekend, right? It was my grandmother's birthday. Okay. So Friday, I wake up and then my son is like, let's go. And I'm like, hey, but we're going to go Saturday because the birthday is Saturday. He's like, no, let's go today. I'm like, okay. And we drove 4 a.m. And on the way, my son says, here's your favorite moon. It's following us. And I look up and I'm like, yeah, you know. And yeah, I mean, on the way, I loved how the stars were playing in the sky. I know it sounds very weird, hey? <laughs> yeah, and they playing, forming hearts, forming things. Uh, there was a cup. I didn't understand, but I understood that cup when I got to my grandmother's house. So when I got there, uh, when say Pavadimu like Walebuwa, you know, her big age also and everything that has been happening and what what. So when I get there, Umkumbo she was not brewing. Yeah, it was just like that and she and I had to fix that, you know. Uh it was hard because I had to listen to the inner voice in me for instructions. Remember I've never done and stuff like that. You know me. I've always told you that I'm a doll. I don't understand why I'm cool to live in me. Meaning, you, I'm too cute for this life. <laughs> but yeah, I had to listen to the inner voice in me. I had to take control of everything now. You know, I fixed um combo to variety. Um, yo, and it was so cold, and it takes time for um combo to brew apparently when it's cold. And I had to make sure I get that. I was just running up and down. I'm, I'm glad my son forced me to wake up. And yeah, man, I found myself conducting um Umtrimbilo. You know, and it was like, yeah, no, I'm old now. I'm old. But I don't know, Tembi, I'm, I'm loving my role now in the family. 
not for the recognition, but I feel like they're validating Abandu Abadala. You know, they're going back to the teachings of Abandu Abadala. They're going back to those. And I love the fact that everyone was listening to me and everything went so beautifully. And yeah, man, um, the voice is very loud in my head. Believe me, uh, I'm listening and I'm jotting everything down in my journal, like you said. Um, but I will be lying, Tammy, if I say things are not going well for me now since I met you. I'm the one who always run away from this, but things are just going well, you know. Um, I'm going to tell you about the guy that I met. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about him one day. Because I, I, I still need to pray about this. <laughs> I need to pray about it. But I feel like if you could just come and leave, you know, and just walk around with me in my day and see. How things are. I'm at peace. I'm at peace a lot now. I'm at peace. Yeah, and sometimes I have to pinch myself because it's so unreal. But I'm happy and I'm grateful um, for you. The whole place and the importance of uh, the case study we're doing today is the place, um, the role and the place and the importance of self-regulation processes and looking at where it is that you are investing energy into in Bidaniako. So the reason we are doing these clips so late is because we had to nap today. We had we took a long nap. I think we were down for like five hours today. You guys know we live in very interesting ways because we are constantly listening to um, our body we are constantly being uh, water guided and water led and the one thing that we have to understand is that so many things get lost in translation so she spoke here yeah, about how she felt a uh, client felt like she was going from person to person being you know like she felt like she was getting a lot of bs things were not making sense or people were playing with her and this is a frustration i deal with daily but it's important for us to understand that it's so easy for things to get lost in translation for example uh the whole concept, this is just an example, the whole idea or the institution of, of marriage initially was uh, for basically, you know, it's rooted in evol evolutionary psychology, right? For us to be able to integrate and reintegrate into communities and to grow bloodlines and to build families, right? So that uh, we are continuing forward as a race. But now you will find that because sometimes there are such huge gaps between um, the generation of our parents' parents, their, par their parents, and then us. Like, sometimes the communication is not clear. Like, it's like a lot of the things that a lot of females my age, uh, a lot of women in their 30s are struggling with today, where they say things like, that, you know, a person is having such a hard time maybe in the relationship space, uh, getting things right, but they are unable to troubleshoot and see where the problems are because we don't have that intergenerational passing down of information where it's, Traditionally and culturally, these things were so well entrenched into the societies. For example, uh, there were certain rites of passage for women so that a woman knows how to be a woman um, and knows how to basically assert herself in her life, right? Um, now with movements like feminism, for example, they come in, there's a lot of Western things that have come in that have, uh, you know, putting you in a... In Tarot, when we speak about uh, the sun being the, 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 the electric field and the moon being the, the magnetic field governing the water bodies, the emotional body and the system, and then this one is the mental one. We're basically talking about yin and yang, right? So it wouldn't make sense for there to be two yins or two yangs. One must be yin and one must be yang. So the, the, the trouble here is how we as people have been able to maintain polarity in, in, in our lives. Client here had a lot of layers when we're talking about uh, you know inherited patterns because now when we are speaking about um, ancestry, we're speaking about genetics and the passing down of information from one generation to another one. So this is what we are talking about when we're speaking about karmic debt, right? That there's good karma and there's also bad karma. There are people that inherit wealth, money, whatever, and then there are people that inherit struggle and pain and they need to clear that out so that it stops being blocked in the lens up. So client you are hearing here, uh, uh, basically her speaking on wounded femininity, right? Because it's so interesting how most times when we speak about wounded femininity as women who have been deprived of masculine support in their lives, we are thinking of single mothers, single mothers raising children without the fathers. But the other side of the coin um, is fathers who, because her father obviously passed when she was very, very young. Um, so her inner child, that little girl inside is not really understanding death like that. 
there's no understanding of the fact that this person passed. It is still processed. It is still being processed by the system as abandonment. It's still being processed as I, I was left. I was left. You left me alone and trying to figure things out on my own. So that also is a form of abandonment that she needed to deal with. Now, depending on what a person is working with, because now if you're working with um, internal, if you're working with inner, if you're working with your personal inner divinity as a person, you're looking at what's going on in a palatal moment, right? You're looking at what's going on within because you can't impact anything externally without going within. And we've demonstrated that over and over and over again. If you are part of our community on that YouTube channel, you know and understand we are constantly putting out stories over there about how people have been able to change in Bilozabo. People have been able to change literally the outcomes that they are seeing and receiving in their, their, their external environment because they went in and made those adjustments internally. So that's what it is that we are discussing um, today. So now when a client is like, you know what, things have been better. Uh, things have been so much better because I know how to regulate now. And uh, I got into places where I was actually running away because I wasn't sure what was going on and I wasn't ready and I wasn't this. That now speaks to um, the humanity of this whole thing because sometimes people cannot, the, the simplicity of when things are too simplified, we feel like, no, something's got to be wrong with that. It cannot be that simple. There must be other layers to it. There must be other things going on that I need to deal with or that I need to face and fix in order for things to fall into, in, 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 into place in my life. Now, the shamanic aspect of tarot mediation, because you must understand that even within a, a, a tarot cosmology, there are different types. Like there is fortune telling. Um, there is mediation, which is mediumship work. That's where the psychic abilities come from. And then there's also one that now is for picking up and clearing blocks. So there are different designations within this, right? Because there are so many elements to man and there's so many elements to a person that if you are talking about regulating and troubleshooting and clearing things, you could be speaking about a lot of different things than a good one. Now, with that being said, when a person is in a place where they are used to addressing the external things externally, it becomes a problem because then I've had people in my life who would then tell me that, no, but you do know you have to uh, deal with Tandazeli in the traditional way because this element or this uh, manifestation part of the work that is being done here, you are wor working with, you're working with your, your inner water as a person. You're working with uh, your magnetic field. You are working with the emotional body inside of your system. So that means that it literally is working within a kulego. So when a person is receiving a mantra, a person is receiving a code, where a client was basically speaking on, I've been applying this mantra, I've been applying this code, this is what it is doing for me. She's understanding that you are going in, you are adjusting these waves. In the previous case study that we did, we were talking about the waves. We were talking about the magnetic field and the, uh, I mean, the electric field and the magnetic one and how sometimes we are receiving waves, but we are also emitting them, right? We were talking about that. Now, once you understand that as, as a person, you understand that this whole conversation of manifestation or repelling, because we're either pulling things in or we are pushing things out. You understand that this is basically, this is prayer work. It is happening. You are working with energy. You are working with prayer. You are working with, basically, this is the energy around the person. This is the light around your body. This is the light around your system. So it is Uptandazi. It's just a very alternative one. It's an alternative approach to it. It's a very witchy and very, I'm a practical magic burly, you guys know. I like practicality. I like being very earth focused in the work because what I've noticed is that once people have practical steps to align the things that are out of balance, it literally makes the world of difference. And sometimes it's just a few things that need to be regulated in order for things to fall into place for a person. And sometimes you don't need more than that. Sometimes you don't need more than that. So today's case study is literally about regulation. I haven't thought of a topic because literally when I got up, I was like, okay, I've, I've, I've gotten all the rest that I need. And now we can talk about the importance then of investing in self and how much the more energy and the more warmth and the more love and the more attention that you're pouring into yourself, this then expands, right? This expands your value as a person. And how does this impact the light around your body, which is your auric field? And how does this impact your ability to work with water, marine energy in your life? Mm -hmm. okay so now we move into the uh now we move to the case studies oh this is so sugary i need to i need to clean it out before it starts drying on my oh, we're all so messy anyway okay so uh we are then going to do the case studies we're going to post them on the sides and then we're going to discuss 
what happened there? What was going on? Um, what was happening there? What is it that she did to get to the outcome that she got? So, uh, Zani, every time I connect with you, something must fall into place. Your first reading was in August and you said, in three months, I will have a job. Boom, the offers were crazy. I chose the bank and I moved to Free State. My second reading that you sent on Sunday, you spoke about Tumakulu, who comes bearing gifts and you see money locating me. Uh, boom, size calls to inform me they owe me. Now I wake up to funds in my account. I will respond to my reading again soon. So was I. What happened there? So when, when people come in for tarot therapy, and I think this is the reason why we express it as tarot therapy, you don't really know what you're going to be given. Some people receive fortune telling where their guidance decides, okay, we're going to tell you what's happening with your fortunes. Some people will get like a highly mediumship, like a mediation thing going on. That's the information that will then uh, come out based on the signals that we receive. And then others will then receive like basically, hey, here are the things that need to be cleared. If you can knock one, two, three, everything is going to be right? So the reason why uh, tarot is a very questions and, and answer based space is if you're not asking the right questions, you're going to get whatever it is that spirit feels like you need to hear, which sometimes if you're not ready for it, it can sound like, I don't know, I'm not, because client here, I'm pretty sure the first time that we were speaking on her relationship situation and they're like, ah, this dude needs to go. She probably did not like hearing that. She probably wasn't here for any of that. Why? Because Sometimes we're trauma bonding and we think it's love. Sometimes we are looking for something that we, are de we were deprived of in our childhood. And sometimes we are repeating these familiar patterns without realizing we're repeating them because the subconscious mind, that psyche is a place of uh, patterns and, and, and it likes familiarity. It doesn't like uh, change and difference. So, so now in that activation, for some people, they are so lucky that it gets to those activations, gets to clear them up energetically so much that that next week they wake up and yo, oh, everything is going great, right? Um, and the role of the mantras and the code, sometimes it's just numbers. Sometimes it's, a, it's an actual uh, a, a, a mantra that helps you either to tap into providence. A lot of uh, my women clients who have problems with, uh, who have wounded femininity, I give them one that helps them to tap into providence, right? When a person understands that they are provided for all their needs or provided for their good, there's nothing to worry about. That helps them to settle down because when a woman is uh, operating too much and they're masculine and they are the ones that are paying all the bills, taking care of everything, they are being the men, they are problem solving, they are fixing things, they are pursuing, they are doing, they are taking initiative. They pull so much from their uh, water, ba I mean, their earth base, right? Which is at the base of the spine. That area is stronger in men where a man is not going to, be depleted at the fact that he had to help pick up a rock or carry a wheelbarrow. He can sustain that for a long time. Where is a woman? The more she's draining from that place. Now, all of the energy that is coming up from the higher wheels are going all the way down to the sacral. So that's why we become, we become so frustrated, so stressed, so drained and so unhappy when we are in provisional spaces, right? When we are in spaces where we can't sit in this femininity, where we can rest and we can relax. And we can actually do the work that we then do because femininity is when you have a woman who is strong in her femininity, right? You have so much expansion in your life. Things just go good because every single time she's doing inner work on herself, things are not only opening up for herself, you get plenty of breakthroughs as well, which is why that you as a woman, you benefit from the strength of your, your, your partner, but your partner also benefits from your strength, right? As a, as a female. And sometimes this is something that is either draining you or it is building you up. So now in the case with the partner that her guidance did not like, this this this, this guy was just draining and draining. He was just taking and taking and taking without giving. And uh, a lot of people, they try to make us feel some type of way for requiring that. But the truth is, in nature, if you keep chopping down trees and you never plant a tree, we will get to a point where we have no, like there are no trees. Therefore, the work that the trees do to give us oxygen is less. Right. So it's not so much like a transactional thing where it's like, OK, you give me this and I'll give you that. It just so happens that if you're taking from nature, you want to replant so that nature can replenish itself. Because if we're taking and we're not giving, we're going to run out. That means that we're not leading. We can't lead. We're incapable of leading. Therefore, we are destroying nature and we're destroying ourselves. So that's the whole idea of it, that 
um, your woman is supposed to replenish you and you replenish your woman in exchange. So that now was what was going on because clearly this is a partner that she had attracted from those um, wounds that were then not dealt with because society can make it easily seem like, oh, you can just mask over it, you can just jump over it, it's not an issue. But then it's something that starts affecting you, right, in real ways where you can't even be radiant. You can't even be radiant, you can't even glow, you can't even be happy. You can't, right? The second one, she's like, um, uh, I definitely am supported and provided for in every and all ways. This was the mantra that we gave to her because we felt like she needed to activate more providence in her life. She was so uh, displaced and so far removed from providence that things were happening with difficulty, right? She was in a place where she was disallowing ease and everything was just a struggle. Remember in a previous video, we outlined how you can identify when you are plugged into abundance and how you can identify when you are plugged into scarcity. Yeah, that's the one. Um, what's the title of that video? I think it's two, 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 one video down from this one. Um, it's the one with the golden tarot cards. She says, um, and Gipigisiluto, yes, you are right. When I sent my request, I was very emotional and lonely. So loneliness is that's then an indication of the fact that you are plugged into scarcity. Um, my brother went back to alcohol. My mother is getting worse. I just need to know, am I taking the right decision when I distance myself? From them and I agree with you I never put myself or my mental health first in the sense that we can't pour from an empty vessel you gotta be full you gotta be whole you gotta be complete you gotta be joyous and happy yourself to be able to give that to the next person right so it wasn't even a case of us saying yeah leave them alone yeah cut them off stay away from the motherfuckers that's not what we were saying we we're basically saying if you were giving from an empty cup you only get empty yeah right Whereas if you're giving from a full cup, you're able to come back from that yourself. Uh, and it's not a self-sacrifice to say, all right? How much? Still a few minutes. Um, it was hard listening to everything. As a person who prefers, prefers wearing a mask, I now have to deal with the root cause of everything. I just didn't like being part of this generational pain. Um, this was not a message that she welcomed, especially because she had so much repressed anger. She didn't know she was angry. And I think that's the most difficult thing when it comes to emotional addictions. Because if you have been frustrated for like a while, that becomes your default setting. So it starts feeling normal to you. If someone comes to you about our oh, team, why what did this all? Oh, I'm not mad. What do you mean? What do you mean? This is not my normal. And it's only when you come out of that that you realize that, oh crap, that actually was not normal at all. Oh God. Oh God, I have a problem, right? But when you are in that state, you don't realize it. It's like when you are in a space of despair and you're in this, these cycles of despair. But because that's your normal, you don't realize it. You don't you don't see it. Other people will see it, but, but you won't. You don't see it. Hmm. Okay, great. So we have made a few notes here of the things that we want to tackle um, in client's case study here. We're just going to play this and then we're going to start. We've got um, two screenshots, but we're going to start with the audio. Tourism, tourism. I'm laughing because I was thinking of you this morning as I was driving, you know. Um, yeah, I'm going to send you a proper voice note. Like, <laughs> I'm going to give you proper feedback. That's what you deserve. But what you need to know right now is that in Jabli Leia Kanya, eh, I feel very whole. Eh, the messages are clear from Abadal and stuff like that. And I'm, gonna, I'm even going to share where am I right now. Um, but yeah no okay i don't mind we can do the case study um i'll be in a comfortable place i think tomorrow night yeah after this whole thing so anything you need from me we can do that but yeah and by the way i got paid on the 25th right i used my last money to send to you so that i can have a reading and just like the other time Hey woman, in my little look in Gainanj, in Gainanj. Yes, hey bro, can I enjoy my weekend? We'll talk, we will talk, but I'm happy. I'm happy and thank you for the YouTube videos. Um, I think they're helping me, they're helping me. They... Okay, I'm going to say much now and I'm not supposed to, but I'm going to share with you proper, proper, proper Sunday. Like I'm going to send you a proper voice on Sunday. Giabong, I love you. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Bye. Yes. So that was us getting permission because obviously you can't use people's information and their cases just randomly. And then a person has come in, got a reading and now their business is all over the web, right? The whole point of these case studies is to strengthen our understanding of what these alternative healing modalities are.
because there are things that you get a lot of support for in the worlds in which we live in, but some other things we just don't. So um, this is for people that want to learn a little bit more about all of this and what it is. Um, so yeah, that was her giving us permission uh, to use her case. And then the first file we played, that was now the full thing where she's coming back and she's like, yeah, let me give you the full background so that you can use that uh, when you are then compiling the case study. So what I love about client situation is it really maps out to this whole story of, because we seem to think that our chakras are a white thing. They're very Eastern. Um, it's non-black and um, therefore it has nothing to do with us. But when you are thinking about the different portals in the in the body, all of them are linked with our uh, uh, the different energy centers, the different energy wheels. So I believe that her first uh, audio where she was explaining to us what's going on, that maps out where the different blocks are in the sense that she's like, okay, we're going to start from 2023 where I was broke, uh, peak depression. I was in peak depression. I resigned twice. I was seeking help everywhere and I felt like people were BSing me. I was fighting with everyone. So that now speaks to the internal conflict, that little girl inside who needed to be whole. So now we know that the inner child is basically water. The inner child is a water element. The inner child is linked with umnono. Umnono is the traditional term basically for your sacral chakra. This is your womb. This is your womb or your gut area, right? So now when you're doing inner child work, you are working basically with Mnono. This is an area where clearly there was a block there and we're going to understand now how it basically comes from the parents and how it is something that is then passed down from that timeline down. She carried on to say, uh, I got the session with you. Uh, the accuracy was very scary. I felt conflicted, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I wrote a note here that the conflict was a relational conflict in that um, in her session, they basically spoke about this relationship she was in and how harmful it was, right? She wasn't in a place where she was ready and willing to get out yet, but she eventually did, right? Um, so those abandonment scars, because we need to remember that uh, if our partners mirror us, right? In your relationship, your partners uh, mirror you. So if you are a person who has a lot of wounds, you have a lot of scars, you have, have a lot of uh, blocked energy that needs to move and you're not doing anything about it, it's going to affect the relationships. Why? Because um, there is a previous case study that we did uh, where client was talking about she's shocked at the fact that she's never been taken on dates. She's never been on dates before. And um, after she started doing you know, that self-work on herself, she started clearing um, all of the blocks up and she was like, I can't believe it. I've been on three dates. It's because um, our partners, the people who we choose and the people who choose us are in actual fact the reflection of where we are energetically. Remember in a previous case study where we spoke about how there's light around your, your, the, your aura is the light around your body, right? And this light around your body, it, 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 it emits waves and those waves dictate what comes to you, that you're either repelling things or you're pushing things away. Now, with that being said, now you understand that if your signal is like this, it's fragmented, it's noisy, it's all over the place, there's all of these problems. The people who match that are the ones that are going to come in. So you're going to be dealing with very conflicted people, people, with, and, and that's why things like marriages and relationships are really a space for all of, you know, a lot of people get to do all their inner child healing and they, 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 that, that's where the real childhood, the healing of the childhood scars and things happen. So she spoke about um, abandonment scars from the passing of her dad. Uh, she spoke about addiction, alcohol addiction. Now that takes us to the base of the spine, right? To the base of the spine. Traditionally, this earth field is associated with Umdao simply because Umdao are identified as the guidance, the guides that take care of things that have to do with survival practicality because the earth is the place of practicality, the world, right? This world where people have to pay rent, uh, take care of security, bills. Be, you must be very practical to be in the physical world, right? Uh, be in your physical body there are things that we cannot avoid so that is a very earth element so people who have uh, uh, wounds in that area they they are the ones that have addiction problems addiction and depression foot problems uh immune related disorders people who have autoimmune uh diseases or or these illnesses that impact and attack the immune system uh most of them you'll find that it's the water base that needs troubleshooting and then the minute they troubleshoot that this is the reason why we get a lot of feedbacks from people who've struggled with depression they've gone on antidepressants they've done everything they're not getting better up until they start troubleshooting the root of the cause because you need to understand that the medication is here to get rid of the symptom it's here to remedy the symptom but remedying the symptom does not really get rid of the issue um 
when we were dealing with another client's case who was the lady who had the spinal uh, uh problem she had the spinal issue she was like i'm so shocked at the fact that i'm doing all of these uh, uh natural um these these natural pathy processes and i'm using natural remedies to uh, self-regulate and i'm not experiencing pain anymore the reason is because you can uh, uh curb a symptom one place but if you haven't dealt with the issue that dis-ease which is a disallowing of ease is going to reflect in other parts of your system, in other parts of your body, meaning that that thing is not something that is removed. It's not something that's deleted. You just got rid of this symptom. Now you're not feeling that symptom. You've numbed yourself from the symptom because the problem hasn't been been, been dealt with. That disallowing of ease is going to reflect in another way where she was coming back and she was saying it was such a crazy thing because yeah, money, the money, the money, money. Everywhere I go, like doctors keep diagnosing me with everything. Like they can't figure out what this is. They give me this. They say this. They say this. Because it's simply because the, the the root of the problem is not being dealt with so you would forever be going there because you haven't dealt with the cause of the issue the underlying thing the thing that is the the what is the at the base of this the minute that you deal with it things start falling uh, falling into place so the clearing of energetic blocks is exactly about that it's not like this thing where people have this idea that oh dealing with abanda, abanda means i'm going to get money and i'm going to be rich and i'm going to be this ancestry is not a get rich quick scheme it's really not a get rich, it's not a pyramid scheme. It is where you are clearing out the parts of you and your life where you are disallowing ease. Because the higher you are energetically, the more you start allowing ease to flow into your experience. Um, and that is basically what was going on here. So trapped energy in the base that then we call an earth wound. It then shows up as addiction, which we see that is something that came in from where she's like, oh, dad definitely could handle uh, his alcohol, but mom couldn't. And now my brother has, you know, is dealing with the same thing that was the passing down, the passing down, the passing down, right? Um, of that which that needs to be cleared, that if this doesn't get fixed, it just Second jumps note, to, um, or the rest of the notes that we've made from the information we've received. So after that, then she started the self-regulation processes. She started uh, self-regulating, right? Um, and then she said here, yeah, so I could reconnect, I could recognize my dad, I could recognize my father in the language you used when referring to him. Uh, it was scary. You changed languages. It was like you were in my head. Um, so this is the thing now when you are using tools to con co connect with a person in the electrical field. You guys must remember that ancient people, like, like the original people, they did not need tools, right? They did not need tools to be able to tap in and tap out, like to get into another person's electric field and then to jump right out, right? But when you are in a space where a lot of this knowledge has been so estranged, estranged from us as people that it's very rare. You do find people that can, you know, do that. But it also goes down with the passing of 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 of, of, of gifts and, and 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 energy in the sense that if I am to have children, there's a high chance that those children will then have this uh, have genes for um uh, you know have genes for the ability to, to channel because in my lifetime, I would have expanded it so much. I mean, there are genes for everything. There are genes for a photographic memory. There are genes for longevity. There are genes for like a genius mind. There are genes for everything, right? Meaning that as we live, as people were activating different things and then these things become passed down. So now this would mean that those children would then receive those genes. So the whole idea of the gift when we are demystifying it and we're taking the ritualistic or the highly ritualized part of these things. These are genes that have been received that were activated at a different time. See how I'm developing so much these channeling muscles. It's very, uh, uh, it would be normal for me to then have a child who will be able to connect easily. Like that muscle is already there and that muscle is developed. So there are people that then you will enter into a space. They will then have to go in and, or go through a particular type of initiation because uh, Umzali didn't. This is the sharpening of that skill and the sharpening of those abilities and the sharpening of those genes or the activation of that energy so then it can then work. And in other instances, there's no need for that because this is something you are, it's inherently, you're inherently born with it. It's there already, you know, like a photographic memory. You just have a photographic memory. You just look at something and you'll always remember it. It's there. It's not something you have to learn not something that you have to practice so being in that space of or in that state of remembering knowing that i'm so drawn to this and this is work that speaks to me so i'm trusting it so now this is then when that activation um comes in so she said uh um it's like you were in my thoughts um yes so here we are now reflecting on the father which is a fire wound remember that the sun plexus the sun plexus right below the heart 
the sun plexus is basically the masculinity in the body. You understand that with the first bottom four uh, wheels, there are ones that are feminine and there are ones that are masculine. The heart um, and the sacral, which is the womb, it is feminine. Um, and then the, the, the sun plexus and the root, these are masculine. So you just really have to look at our uh, physical bodies as man and woman. Um, as a woman, the areas where we have the most energy, those areas are protruding, right? Like you have boobs, and then, you know, when you conceive and you have a child, your stomach kind of like bulges out, right? Uh, most of us also have mikava and whatnot, but that's fine. So these are the two areas. This is this heart center and the sacral. Uh, so this, these are the two areas where you can think of this as um, the air field and then the water, right? And then in males, men, the masculine fields, which is the yang, you have the sun plexus, the solar plexus, and you have the root. Um, and you know it's because uh, they are uh, uh, sexual organs protrude, they go out, right? So now a lot of the conversations then when it comes to things like um, equality and people will say things like, but why is it that men have to you know, provide? Why can't women provide? Uh, why must it be that way? Um, that's not fair. It's not this. It's, it, it's just basically how we are. It's, it's DNA, it's genetics, it's how we are designed as people. Um, because masculinity has uh, higher levels of testosterone than us as women, um, that makes them uh, 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 keepers of the physical environment. They have physical power. We have metaphysical power, right? A woman's strength is in the unseen, right? Which is why we are linked with water, which are the emotional fields, the pulling from spirit, the breathing life into things, the giving life, the ability to expand things and to multiply things into spirit, right? That is a feminine strength, it's a feminine power. And then the masculine one is then more physical where, um, you know, like wanting to compete with that is like trying to compete with um, or trying to compete like, you know, like even with just younger, like even just with younger males, guys, younger males, someone who is 17, a 17 year old boy. I'm a 30 year old woman. I cannot compare with that uh, person. That person has physical strength, right? Uh, the ability to pick things up, the ability to do things is how you know, we are just designed differently. So I won't go into detail about that because I've done a full video clip discussing that. So I don't want to rehash these topics, but I was just going to the point of where the father wound is then located, her feeling abandoned uh, by her father, because then what happens is you see that pattern playing out in her spread when they were saying, leave this partner, the person you're with right now, it's not going to work out. It's because that particular person was mirroring all those wounds back. So this is a person who was not present. It was a person who... Um, yeah, like that person was basically mirroring to her the scars that she needed to deal with because although it was a natural thing, like when a person passes, your inner child is not really accepting an understanding of that, like how we would like to think as human beings because we're not designed like that mentally. So she was like, um, I had terrible past wounds and traumas that I wasn't, I wasn't addressing um, and I feel, felt like my, my, my brother was feeding the pain. You said things would fall into place job offers and money started coming in and I ran away because I thought this was too good to be true. Um, I thought this was good to, too good to be true for me. So obviously when we are existing in survival, um, uh, sometimes when someone connects and starts activating higher timelines for us, we don't feel comfortable with that. It, it's very unfamiliar. We're just like, I don't know what this is. So we fear it, right? Because it's not part of our paradigm like that. So our system wants to erase it out as a deviation. It's not the norm, it's like a deviation. So you're just running, you're like, oh God, I don't know what this is. You know, this must be some witchcraft or whatever you're doing. I don't know, I don't like this. I don't like this, right? Because that's your system saying, what the fuck is going on? Sorry for the language. Um, so going from survival mode to things going well, I wasn't used to that. So I ran from you because it felt so unfamiliar. Um, having to forgive my parents, my mother, uh, you know, was a very difficult thing. So part now of this forgiveness, because I know there are a lot of people that have an issue with forgiveness because then it starts feeling like you're letting people go uh, get away without taking accountability. But it's part of release work because then it gives this kind of like heaviness. It gives you this kind of heaviness that you can't like part of release work allows you to kind of like let go because then she carried on at a, at a, at a different place where she was like, um, uh, uh, I feel like I'm unable to eat meat, right? Not being able to eat meat. So the lighter you become as a person, the lighter you become, the higher frequency you also become. Like, it's like you're able to go up, you know, you just become a higher vibration. So the higher your vibration, the more ease you allow in. So now people who have really high and are in high places energetically, most of them, they can't stand meat, they can't stand alcohol. 
because these are things obviously that pull us down, right? That the minute we've had it, we are just a little bit off kilter, you know, because it goes against that. So now, um, and we spoke here about how addiction actually is a symptom for something far more sinister going on. And it's at the very base, which now leaves you rooted at the base, which is the place of survival. Now, um, pray, the, the, the addiction problem, it being a, a block in the, in the, in the earth base, it's, it, it affects a person's practicality because the earth place is about survival and rent and taking care of things. So um, during so the week, as I was doing files and I was doing uh, tarot recordings for people, I came across what I think and believe is a very, very, very important question. Um, and this is something that I believe client was battling with and struggling with. And I was like, you know what? I, I want to do a short little post about this because I know that there are some people still that I know personally that are struggling with this particular thing. And I was like, well, let's unpack it, should we? Right? So basically the question was, how come other races don't need to deal with ancestry and yet they still succeed in life? Um, he basically said, is this not holding us back somehow? Is this not holding us back in life? So I start the post off saying, many of us walk around carrying anger, hurt and resentment that is busy eating away at us. Because it's not that white or Indian people or Asian people don't have ancestry. They do. I've done medium, mediumship work across the racial lines and I can tell you that everybody has ancestry regardless of their religious faith. It's just genetics. If you have genes, you have predecessors and hereditary information passes down from one generation to another through genes. It's not a religion. It's not a, if I don't believe in ancestry, it's not real for me. If you have genes, you have ancestors and this is a scientific fact. It is not a belief. Without foresight, you can easily see remedial solutions to symptoms as the actual cause of the problems, when that's not even where the root of the issue is. People aren't comfortable with being honest with themselves. It's just too painful. Because now, why must it be far-fetched? Why must it be far-fetched that emotional regression can run down a bloodline the same way lack and scarcity does? You do not see patterns jumping from one generation to another in your own life? Yes. Yes, there are people who rob, kill, and steal, who get away with it only to face consequences much later on. Yes, there are people who succeed without the burden of ancestry hanging over their heads. The practice of veneration is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It is in fact rooted more in rectifying, balancing, and troubleshooting problem areas. Bringing things back to the natural balance that nature intended for. Why must we compare generational traumas and patterns as if they are the same across the board? It is not fair. It is not fair, but some people inherit wealth while others inherit years and years of unresolved hurt. So the application and the applying of this mantra, you understand that you are shifting your state, your mental and your emotional state. By shifting your mental and emotional state, you are adjusting the waves that are leaving the, the waves and the signal that's coming out through your, whoa, the waves and the signal that's coming out through your aura. And this affects the things that come to you, locate you, or the things that you're repelling around. Sounds simple in theory. And her whole case is an example of that because she was really allowing herself to be guided and to be supported because a lot of us females who we feel like we, we didn't really re receive support from caregivers and stuff like that or the type of support that we needed, a lot of us struggle with hyper-independence and hyper-independence means that sometimes you don't really allow people to help you. You don't, you don't allow people to assist you. you. You'd rather die than to ask for help, right? Which is a very, even it, it's a trauma response in itself because you're not actually trusting that people can and will help you. Um, so for her to be in a space where she's like, yo, I could feel that all is well, all is well, um, is a great thing. So yeah, that's all basically for today's cut case study. I think this one might be quite long and might go on for 40 minutes. I don't know, but, uh, this now is what we've got for this week. Um, and I'm guessing that the, the next case study will do it on over the weekends. So I hope this lights things up in your life. I hope it's just opens everything up right i hope everything makes sense and i hope you feel supported um you know on your journey of aligning this into in your life and yeah so uh if you like this type of work you like this type of content please engage please subscribe um it helps us and it helps to grow this platform that we are building here so that people who are exploring alternative um aligning uh, uh modalities they can find support they can find assistance and i mean we've all been scammed i've been scammed I've been scammed, people get scammed from time to time. And I think the more information you have and the more you understand, the less you will fall into um, the cracks. And, you know, it's all love from us. Um, we do all of this from a place of love. Um, so what's